We've already seen a for next construct as a means of making a block of code execute repeatedly until some condition is met, the so-called exit condition. I can achieve something similar using what's called a do loop. Here's an example. I'm saying do until x equals 5. Here's my block of code, or single line of code, and then loop. So let's give this a try and see what happens. Hello, 0, 0, 0. I'm pressing the Enter key repeatedly here, and I can see that I'm stuck inside an infinite loop. I'm going to have to use Control Break to get out of this. The problem is that x isn't growing each time I pass through the loop. That's the subtle difference between a do loop and a for next loop. It's up to me to increment x every time I pass through the loop. So I'm going to say x equals whatever it used to be, plus one more. I'm taking control of incrementing x. Let's try it again. And you can see x is growing now, and when I hit the exit condition, I drop out of the loop. There's my done message. The do loop comes in a number of different forms. I could, for example, move this test to the bottom of the loop. So I'm saying do these two lines of code and loop until x equals 5. As you'll see, I get exactly the same effect. The only difference is I'm testing for an exit condition at the bottom of the loop, down here. There's a subtle difference between performing the test down here as opposed to up here. If I perform the test at the bottom of the loop, these two lines of code must execute at least once, no matter what. Let me make that clear. If I move the test to the top of the loop, and x already has a value of 5, when I run the program, we don't actually enter the loop at all. We've already met the exit condition. So the code inside the loop doesn't actually execute at all. If, on the other hand, the test is down here, the two lines of code inside the loop will execute no matter what. If I run this program, x will be given a value of 6. And then it's incremented to 7, 8, 9, and so on, and I'm stuck inside another infinite loop. Control break to get out. The problem is that x had a value of 6 to start with, and then it was incremented to 7, and then 8, so we never actually met the exit condition. x can't possibly become 5, it's already too big. So in summary, we have to be a little bit more careful when we're using do loops, but as you'll see later, they can be incredibly flexible. Sometimes they're more appropriate than a for next. There's another form of the do loop we can use as well. Instead of saying loop until x equals 5, I can say loop while x is less than 5. If I just take this statement out here, try it again, you'll see it's working perfectly well. The only difference is I'm saying keep on doing it while it's less than 5. When it becomes equal to 5, we drop out of the loop. I can also say do while x is less than 5. And again, I'll get exactly the same effect. One final point to make about do loops is it's probably not a good idea to call this variable x. I'm going to change its name to i count. So wherever I see x, let's replace that. The simple reason for this is because I'm using this variable to count the number of times I pass through the loop. So i count seems like a more sensible name than x. In summary, there are four variations of the do loop iteration construct which you have available to you. Which one you use will depend on the circumstances and, of course, the rest of the code around the loop. This is the first one, where we are saying do until an exit condition is met. And as we've seen, depending on the value of this loop counter, this block of code may never execute, or indeed, 
we may find ourselves stuck in an infinite loop. This is the second variation, where we are saying loop until an exit condition is met. Now in this case, the block of code will execute at least once. Here's the third variation, where we are saying do while an exit condition has not yet been met. And the fourth variation is where we are saying loop while an exit condition has not yet been met. There's a fifth variation you may come across in some old literature, which used to be supported in earlier versions of VBA. This is the while wend construct. We are saying while an exit condition has been met or has not been met, and then wend, which is short for while end. We'll see some practical examples of using the do loop construct later.